Hockey was my main love growing up, and all I wanted to do growing up was play hockey and, and be a hockey player. Growing up, you, you go to tournaments, and you know when you go to these college games with with your teams, and just seeing that atmosphere and, and the passion, I was just really drawn towards it. That was my dream. Was just I wanted to play in that atmosphere. A lot of people ask why did I get into hockey since I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona. I think it's just my dad's background and um, his brother's love in the game and uh, just his whole family uh, loving hockey that got my brother and I into it. He's six years older than me, but that age gap was just a way for me to look up to him in a sense. Just everything he did, I tried to do what he did and whatever sport he played, I wanted to play. I'd say I have more of an edge than him. He might hate losing a little bit more than me, so it's a, a friendly, competitive relationship. Uh, we don't put each other down after after wins or losses. I fell in love with roller hockey, actually. Being from Arizona, we didn't get to play pond hockey. I never went on a pond until I was probably like 14, 15 years old. I have fond memories of me, my brother, and my dad just taking a roller ride every night and um, shooting pucks at a basketball hoop. It was never a net for us. It was a basketball pole. So um, just memories like that made me uh, fall in love with the game. And when I made the transition to ice hockey, I, I loved it just as much. It's just been great growing up with him and watching him grow. had some pretty big hip injuries growing up. I ended up getting my hip replaced when I was 19, and it wasn't something that happened like that. It was an injury that I had for a while. It's called leg perthes disease or an avascular necrosis. It's the same injury that like Bo Jackson, for example, got when he was playing football. I always knew that like I was never gonna get to the college level, unfortunately. I knew he wanted to, and I knew he was good enough. I just tried to help him really in, in any way I could. I was probably 11 years old. I remember just seeing him in pain and he would gradually like couldn't skate as well. So it was hard to see. He became my coach the following year. His under 14 AAA year, I got the opportunity to be behind the bench that year. It was just great to be around him and watch him grow that year and, and help out where I could. Sosny, lead pass ahead. Mentor for breakaway coming in. Got the shot, score! On the rebound, Eric Mentor. What a nice pass out of the zone. It was definitely eye-opening playing for the Junior Coyotes and then going straight to play for the U.S. team. It's a little bit different playing in Arizona and then going to play in Michigan in the cold with all the best players in the nation. Just getting to wear the USA logo against other countries is something that um, doesn't come around often and you, you really don't get a feeling like that playing for playing for your country um, until you actually do it. It's a crazy feeling putting on the crest. Hoffield to the end wall. Beecher digs it free. And a shot, and they score! The United States gets it. It looked like it was Eric Middendorf, the native of Scottsdale, Arizona. Growing up, I never really looked at the U.S. program as a spot for me until big number 34 Austin Matthews made his decision to go there. And I remember going to games of his with my dad and my family and just watching him play. And he was a huge inspiration for me and a lot of players growing up in Arizona. We didn't have a guy to really look up to that had been to the National Hockey League. And he's still my favorite player to this day. He was uh, the first person to call me actually when I made the U.S. I remember telling my family and then getting a call and going into the other room and then coming back in the, the room and telling my family it was Austin Matthews and uh, seeing their faces was pretty funny. That was a dream for me and a dream come true when I got the call that I made that team and I was excited to follow in his footsteps going to the U.S. team. Coach Cole was my coach for my under 17s year at USA Hockey, and he ended up leaving uh, with Coach Luongo to come here. That's the main reason why I chose Michigan State. With the US team, you spend an awful lot of time with the guys, whether you're traveling or at the rink, it just seems like you know a good chunk of the day you're around them. So we get to know the guys real well. He was a captain on the championship team last year. So I think I've just seen him as a complete player, really. He's brought that here with us, and he's just made himself a really valuable player. And, and the other thing is, is his leadership, his skills have, have really popped out. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that just jumped into our group this year, but as the year's gone on, he's more and more vocal in the room, on the ice, and uh, um, he leads real well by the way he plays. So it's, it's been fun to see him grow up. Into the slot, Whoa. Middendorf misses just wide to the right. Yes. Listen, front yes. shot, goal for Michigan State! Ha -ha.
21.2 seconds to play. The Spartans take the lead for the first time tonight. He wasn't going to miss on his second opportunity. I was really excited when he committed to Michigan State. There were a few schools he had kind of narrowed it down to. I was really hoping he was going to choose MSU. He and I kind of knew what he was going to get here um, from a coaching standpoint, which is an expectation that, that everybody works hard and hard work is rewarded. I was really happy with this decision. He's watched me at every level. He moved out to Wisconsin after he graduated college at the same time that I moved out to Michigan to play for USA. So he was always driving to my games. And when I played in Chicago last year, he was still in Wisconsin. So he was driving out every other weekend to watch me play and tell me what I could do better and stuff, even though he hasn't played hockey in eight years or something crazy. He's always telling me how to get better, and that's kind of what I try to put into my own game is just his compete factor and what he still holds to this day, even though he doesn't play hockey. There's such an urgency for things to be great right now that we forget to kind of reflect and kind of see really where we're at and why we're playing the game. And, uh, you know, Eric's, Eric's family is real important to him. They do a lot of things together. If that's a motivational thing, that, that's a good one. I'm just proud that he he works hard to do his best you know at the things he can control like being a good teammate bringing the effort being a coachable player those are the things that you know he could control day in and day out i feel like he does all those things very well it's been fulfilling to say the least to watch him play college hockey and, and get to do what i wish i could have done it's been awesome to see him get to this level i couldn't be happier for him Little left circle shot blocked away now Gucciardi yes. shot, goal down the middle, tipped in by Middendorf. Michigan State needed one on this power play and they delivered. His career could end tomorrow. I'd be completely happy with everything he's done up until this point. He's exceeded my expectations. I just love his work ethic and the passion he brings. And it's just, it's just really fun watching him do what he loves to do. I'm really happy to be a part of it. My why for playing hockey has always been uh, my brother Connor. It means everything to me that my brother wanted to play college hockey and now I'm doing it. I think he would have been able to play if he didn't have that hip replacement just purely off how competitive he is in the sport and how much he loves the game. It means a lot that he gets to support me and just watching his transition to Michigan State and buying all the apparel and coming to the games and stuff, he, he truly bleeds green. It just shows how much he supports me.